Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Good, good. Very excited to be here. As uh, Jeff mentioned, he invited me down to the 140 Conference in Detroit past uh, October. Um, really appreciative that I'm back here again in New York City to give a presentation to you all, even though I am intimidated by the little uh, Oscar speech, you know, song popping up. So, <laughs> right there. Uh, so today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the stuff that we do over at our hospital system over at Detroit Medical Center uh, down in Detroit. Um, my name is Julian Bond. I'm the social media manager over um, at the DMC, um, DMC Detroit Medical Center. Um, our hospital system is made up of eight different hospitals, including a children's hospital, a rehabilitation hospital, a women's hospital, and they're mostly da located down in Metro Detroit. Um, we started Twitter like you know, a lot of companies uh, two to three years ago. Um, we started it off with the intention of just basically going on a nerd or social media platform like Facebook and MySpace before it, and using it to really communicate to our patient base and also our community base just to give them a message about, you know, come to our hospital to get better. Um, we started two, three years ago, and then we, you know, um, had like over 10,000 followers of all of our, you know, Twitter hospital accounts. But the main thing we wanted to do with Twitter is not just be, any other hospital that does Twitter. Um, with Twitter, as you know, I wrote a hospital system. The main question we have to ask ourselves is like, why would you want to follow a hospital system unless you're you know, seeking care at a hospital, have a friend or family member going to the hospital, or et cetera. Like, otherwise, why would you follow a hospital system unless you are in the hospital? So we wanted to do a lot of things with using Twitter to try to get the message across. So, one of the first things that we did was we started, I started my own alter ego uh, at uh, DMC um, Julian, underscore Julian. Uh, this is my alter ego. What I used to do is I'll go around, we created a social media team in which we go around our hospitals using our little smartphones and uh, uh, Blackberries, and we just wanted to really um, be interactive with Twitter and not just be like a news feed as a hospital system to tell people to come to our hospital. We wanted to expand and really be interactive with people who we're talking to on Twitter. So. One of the main things that we did at first was we wanted to make medical education fun and interesting. We didn't just want to just tweet about our services. We really wanted to get, use Twitter to its fullest to really talk about it in a fun way. So one of the things that we did was a couple of years ago on uh, September 9th, uh, 2009, was we paired up with a radio station, a local Mojo in the Morning, and we did this contest where we had three expected mothers at three of our hospitals. We were by bedside, it was like myself and then our other hospital uh, mar marketing team, and we were by there, by the phone, our blackberries in the hand, tweeting away, and three of these mothers uh, signed up for this contest where the, uh, the mother who had the baby closest to 9.09 a.m., uh, 9.909, won $999. So it was an interesting contest that we did to kind of like spread awareness of our, you know, um, women's services and baby services at our hospital. And we also did um, this live surgery, which um, I dressed up, you know, in scrubs, and it was the first time I ever went into an operating room. Went inside with the patient's consent, and we had our laptops and Blackberries, and we tweeted a live surgery, a live uh, hip replacement surgery. So we did something like that and tweeted it every step of the way where if someone's interested in getting a minimally invasive hip surgery, they could do like check up us, us on Twitter and see like, hey, it's really not that bad of a surgery to do, especially there inside of the OR, tweeting away with it. Um, another thing that we wanted to really do with Twitter was uh, boost our employee morale. So instead of, you know, just talking to our external lines, we really wanted to get our own workers at our hospitals, all eight of our hospitals to really you know, be interactive with us and getting on the fun. So we did this thing. I showed um, in my presentation in Detroit this uh, ICU two hand washing dance contest. And what it was, we had um, six of our hospitals. They have intensive care units, and we had a contest where we wanted to promote hand washing. Hand washing may seem simple, like you know, you get dirty, wash your hands, plain as day, but. Uh, we wanted to make it aware that it, hand washing really does save lives. Like without the power of washing your hands and you're going to you know, help people in the hospital, it really does help out. So we had this fun contest where each of our hospitals dabbed their own dance, a little hand jive dance like grease or do a little cabbage patch. And it went around the hospital and we filmed them using our little portable cameras and tweeted away the experience. And what started off as an internal thing where we went to each hospital, we had an internal vote to see who was the best unit, who did the best, you know, hand driving dance. And we Twittered away and it kind of caught, caught on with our, low, our great, like, local Detroit community. They saw what we were doing, they retweeted away, so it kind of grew within the first week we were doing it. So after tweeting it for a while, 
we ended up um, having a major um, news uh, caster down there. His name is Stephen Clark at one of our major Detroit uh, news stations. He's a big uh, fan of Twitter. He saw our tweet about hand washing. This was without no press release, no anything else to the public, just our tweets start off internal. He saw it and saw our video online. He's like, that's a really great way to promote hand washing and promote employer morale. So I'm, I'm gonna talk to my health reporter and try to see if we can get a, you guys on the news. I swear, not even 48 hours later, um, he tweeted it out. Um, they came out to our hospital, they filmed us for a story, and then we were on the news within 48 hours, a new story from Twitter on the channels, you know, on the local news down in Detroit. So that's how we started to notice that Twitter went really viral really, really fast. Um, on top of um, boosting poly morale and, you know, communicating with the outside world, we really want to use Twitter to tell the good stories that go on in our hospital systems, um, tell the story about the patients that come through, tell the stories about the doctors and the therapists that really help them out. So. We heard about the story at our Rehabilitation Institute where this young girl, her name is Jennifer, she was paralyzed in a um, car accident two years ago and she was paralyzed from the waist down. And she started going to our Rehabilitation Institute to be able to eventually walk again. She was combined to a, a wheelchair now. And one of our marketing directors, um, you know, constantly talked to her and visited her just to say hello. And she mentioned to us last October that she got engaged and she wanted to get married. And her goal was to do therapy, like really, really work at therapy to enable to walk down the aisle without the assistance of her wheelchair or without assistance of um, a walker. So what we did was we thought it was a really inspirational story we wanted to share with everyone to share um, the fact that she, you know, she could do it, everyone else can do it, she works hard at it. So we tweeted away, we were inside a rehabilitation institute taking pictures and she was totally game with the idea, she loved it and she just wanted to get the word out at the hard work she wanted to do, be able to walk down the aisle. So we tweeted away, we gave updates and gracefully she invited us to her wedding uh, this past April. So the wedding was in Ontario where we witnessed her essentially walking down the aisle without the assistance of her walker or her wheelchair. Um, there wasn't a dry in the room. It was like crazy family members were crying. I had a little tear in my eye to you taking my little picture. And I took this picture and asked people like, if you're interested, please want to follow her wedding. And I took this picture, tweeted out everyone. Everyone was just blown away from how hard she worked. And like I started this in October and this was April. It wasn't that long. And she had the ability to walk down the aisle without the assistance of her wheelchair or a walker. So um, that's how we saw that Twitter really had that power to really tell a good story about the, the things that we do in our uh, medical system. It's not just about, you know, um, the normal kind of PR marketing things that we do. We really want to tell a deep story and really share with the world to say, like, we helped her do this. And she wanted to say that uh, if I could do this, then or people in similar situations can do this as well. So I just wanted to leave you guys with a uh, video from this right here of the wedding finish that we took. Oh no, actually, I'm sorry, forgot about it. Uh, actually, before that, uh, before I do that, the power of Twitter, um, besides the local community, um, the news spread and spread and went um, local news and went internationally. Uh, people from the, the UK came down, um, people from Canada came down, and they were recently interviewed on Today Show with Matt Lauer. Um, based off of Twitter. So it was like the great local Detroit community tweeted the story out and then it kind of spread like wildfire to the point where they were featured on you know, NBC News because they thought the story was really inspirational and really great. So now I would like to play a video snippet of it. do some sort of walking, I get up into the standing frame and I stretch. From there we usually put on my braces and I get up into these parallel bars and, and I continue with you know, walking back and forth a couple of laps and then backwards a couple of laps, side to side a couple of laps and then we move on to the next activity. We've gone from walking with a walker to being able to walk with the lost strain crutches for longer distances. And, you know, that applies to everyday life. Um, I think my best memory of the day was uh, definitely the walk down the aisle with my dad and my brother. Uh, as soon as they opened up those doors, seeing Jen standing there with my dad and her brother, uh, you know, it just felt like that was the whole reason for the day. 
You're still my baby daughter And now I've gained a song That was probably the one thing that I was really hoping I was going to get right that day. Sweet wall. And that's my presentation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it.